Yes, I did. Yes, I freaking did. And we should be there right now. Yes. Good. <laughs> I believe we are there. Uh, welcome. There. Welcome to the uh, Machine Room a podcast. The Ocho. The Ocho. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. The Ocho. Oh, man. Now I got to get to the fucking um, stuff like that. Anyways, it's what? September 18th? Wednesday. Yeah. That's right. Wednesday, September 18th is the Machine Room Podcast. How you been, Rach? I've been doing good. Just chilling, doing a lot of streaming, getting new followers. How about yourself? That's what, yeah. I mean, I've, I've seen you and you playing Forza 6. What? Yeah. I didn't going, see that coming. Going hard. Mm-hmm. I was trying to think of something different. I was going to stream Red Dead Redemption because there's the new online stuff. And I was like, yes. you know what? That sounds boring to stream. I'm going to fucking race cars. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even done that new stuff yet. So many That's games fun. out there, man. So many games. I know. It's so much, like, to do. Like, too many games to learn, man. <laughs> yeah. They just just can't keep up. And then this month is just more stuff. Mm-hmm. And I'm putting stuff in the back burner. Right now, I'm focusing on Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Uh, nice. LP want to play Destiny 2, so we want to catch up to the new thing going up. Uh, shout out to Dania D. First yes. comment, first viewer. Welcome to the machine room, man. We love you, Danny D. I know Danny D watches your streams all the time, which is fantastic, yes, man. I love it. I love Danny's it. the goat. The goat. I saw that um when you were doing Forza, um some guy came in and he was just like really helping you on the whole hooking up your car oh. and all that stuff. Yeah, his name is uh, Randy. He's from Canada. He's from Alberta, Canada. He's a really great guy. And we um ended up multi. I'm um, playing multiplayer till like four in the morning yeah, and nice. really great guy. He liked to help me set up my car and all that kind of stuff. So really great guy. So big shout out to him. Shout out. Uh, I, it, it's funny cause his name came up the real Randy. And I was like, I didn't know Randy got on Twitch, like thinking it was our Randy. And then like, no, it's not him at all. It's just, it's a crazy white dude from Canada. Not yeah. that he's crazy. He's really cool. Yeah, I I thought I thought it was that too. I was like, this guy. Oh shit, man! God damn it! This guy. Right now, the fucking intro just came out of nowhere. <laughs> Technical difficulties. Don't worry about it. But yeah, I also thought so. I also thought that too. It's like this something he didn't tell me because he says he'd be stalking. You know, it's like I'd be stalking. Yeah. You but I guess. I guess. Not. I know he used to do that back in the day on uh, Tiny Chat. He would randomly pop in. You're like, oh shit, he does exist. <laughs> yeah, he would do that. He's real. <laughs> he's, a, he's a real person. I never um been into Forza. I know it's like the Gran Turismo of the Xbox, but um I saw it was free and I definitely want to try it out as well. Did you download it when it was free? Hell yeah, you know me. Okay, cool. Yeah, it's then free. we can do multiplayer, and I can really show you. It's really fun. Oh, like me to crash. You, you really get into it. Like I was sweating, and my hands were clammy, and like cramping up, and it was really fun. Like no, no. I, I, until I see you with the steering wheel, freaking <laughs> the steering wheel gaming controller and the fucking pedals. You're like in this car mounted. I, yeah, in your those room. are awesome. Then. Then we're talking. It reminds me of uh, Grandma's Boy with the guy that had the yes. the uh, race car bed. <laughs> Grandma's Boy, when he's like playing the DDR, it's like, wait, what's, what's that mean? What's that mean? <laughs> what does high score mean? <laughs> Did I break it? <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> and the... But yeah. <laughs> I am a robot. I have a robot vagina. Yeah. So we didn't have any topics today, so we're just going to sit here for like an hour in just dead silence and just look at each other. Just look at each other. Well, this week came out X-Men Dark Phoenix, which yes. I heard was not fantastic, but my ass gets comic book movies regardless. So uh, we Cardinals. have not seen this yet. No, we have it, but we haven't seen it. No, 
So uh, maybe next time we'll talk about how <laughs> fucking crazy it is. But I, I want to see. We'll, I want to see how we'll get how, to it. how crazy it is. But you know, and next time we'll get to that. We can still talk John Wick for the rest of our lives if you want. Oh, forever. It's the John Wick show. <laughs> bottom line. <laughs> Oh, um, I just want to watch it because it has that chick from uh, Game of Thrones, which I've never seen either, which people probably hate me for. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, she's really cute. So I was like, she yeah, is. I want to check that out. She is. The thing with those X-Men movies that ever since first class, and I love them because James mm-hmm. McAvoy, but mostly Michael Fassbender. I yes, that's me too. I love me some Michael Fassbender. I mean, that guy, Absolutely. that guy is amazing. And and what got me was an X-Men first class when he's trying to, uh, Xavier is trying to teach him to move the satellite and use more of his power, but he has to go deep within himself and get the emotion to be able to mm-hmm. like enhance his power. And then you just see him and you see him start crying and thinking about the Holocaust and all that stuff and what he's been through. And you're like, Wow, like I felt that emotion and I was like, Michael Fassbender is the shit. And then if you watch, what is it? Haywire, I think, with Gina Carano. Mm -hmm. I still want to watch that. Oh, man. Michael Fassbender, Gina Carano, they duke it out real nice. Oh, yeah. And Danny says Michael Fassbender in Alien, Covenant, and Prometheus. Yeah, he was badass in those movies, too. That's true. He was in there. And as much as people, I mean, especially fans, probably don't like this movie, I think he was awesome in the Assassin's Creed movie. Yeah, it was really good in that movie. That was my, like, I saw, like, Assassin's Creed movie, Michael Fassbender. I was like, I'm Mm -hmm. in. And then I saw the movie, and I'm a big Assassin's Creed fan. The changes didn't bother me. It was, thought it was really cool, and he, he I killed liked it. it. Yeah, he killed it. So Michael Fassbender until the day I die, man. And he's Irish, or he's one of ours. There you go. You see. <laughs> um, but you still haven't seen Frank, have you? No, man. And I'm still oh mad that God. LP ruined it for me when he said who the fuck it was, and I'm just like, you're an asshole, dog. <laughs> yeah, it was all about the reveal at the end. Fucking asshole, but it's okay. But his his accent in that movie is so great because it's rare to see him with like an American accent. Mm-hmm. So it's so great to watch it just for that. Oh yeah, and he was in Inglorious Bastards. He was. He was the whole like three or three. Hey, speaking of Inglorious Bastard, that goes to Quentin Tarantino. I finally saw Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. How about that? I was going to say Mexico, but no. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good movie, too. Yes. Um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was is a really is a good movie. Now, I'm going to break it down. One of the reasons why I like took forever to go see this movie, and mostly I went to go see it because I was ready to just wait until like Netflix, you know, chill at home, watch it. I heard he was going to have an extended fucking cut, like his Hateful Eight, you know, it's going to be like a yeah. series. I was like... I'm ready for that. In theater, I wanted to watch it in 35 millimeter, and but I didn't because I kept dragging, and they already took it out of 35 millimeter. Don't worry, Danny. I'm not gonna spoil anything. So I finally went to go see it because every damn week I had coworkers like, "Have you seen uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood?" I'm like, "No." It's like you gotta go see it. And every weekend I'm like, "I'm gonna go see this movie." But then I think, do I want to sit in this theater for two hours and some change? Right. Right now, you know, like I got things to do. Um, I finally took the time. Movies are long as shit. Yes, they are, and I I know that it's like Quentin Tarantino. It's like you you know like when I when I was about to see Hey Foy, I was like, all right, I'm ready to see this movie, which I saw at home by the way, and I'm like, all right, I'm ready, I'm ready to sit down and just watch a movie with people talking and talking and talking. <laughs> Which is what Quentin Tarantino movies are all about. So, but great dialogue. So I go, I finally sit down. Um, it's a local theater here. Uh, the movie's been playing there for a while, so they put it in the in the in the in the in the room with the smaller kind of screen. So I'm like, oh, whatever, man. Sit back, boom, kick in, and of course, you know, um, 
it's set in the 60s and there's a lot of throwback to like 60s shows especially westerns and and the way it's shot and and put together uh leo dicaprio is an actor and he had a hit show and he his show got canceled so he's like you know working on other shows that he's trying to move up but this guy who by the way is al pacino tells him like yo you need to do this go do spaghetti westerns because they're just using you and your career is going down so that's basically the thing about leo trying to bring up his career but his best friend is a stuntman that was with him and that's brad pitt's character who's fucking the shit and it's a story about them too about leo going up and brad pitt just like being his right hand man and also like having to deal with his past and the whole movie centers around the 60s and around the time that roman Polanski was with sharon tate and if you know that story you know that Sharon Tate and her friends were killed by the Manson family so that's where this once upon a time in Hollywood centers around so it builds up on that and it focuses on all that and focuses on those two characters and this thing that happened in history and you know it leads to the end and I'm not going to say what happened in the end but it's 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 good stuff because you know their dialogue is fucking fantastic. It's funny. It's really funny and it's truly something like when he said he's going to have a miniseries cut like you could see it as a miniseries instead of just a 2 hour and some change movie, you know. My beef right. with the movie though. <laughs> Besides some shots that is like okay, I don't need to see Brad Pitt driving for fucking 3 minutes. But <laughs> My real beef, and I I know this is something that's Tarantino's forte and obsession, but I feel like he never focused on it, on it so hard than in this movie. Feet. His fucking obsession and love with a woman feet. Really? They're so, yes, like... This was brought to my attention, and I was like, oh, that makes sense why you see some, so many feet angles. But you only see it here and there. In Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, there is countless shots of woman's feet in the frame that you're like, doesn't need to be there. Like, I get this one <laughs> shot. I get this one shot where there's a hippie chick, and she's in the car. She got her feet up on the dashboard. Okay, I get that. You know, hippie girls would do that. Right. But you didn't have to use a shot that's from outside looking within the windshield and the feet is just like, bam, in your face and the characters are back there, you know? I don't want to see feet. Exactly. I don't want to see feet either. God damn it. And it's like Margot Robbie is hot as hell, but I don't want to see her yeah. feet. <laughs> I, don't. I don't like feet. I can pal pass on that. I thought it was just me. Like, I get mad at people outside and freaking sandals and feet. And I'm like, I don't want to see your damn feet. God damn it. He he did that whole scene in um, a Pulp Fiction with Uma Thurman's feet. When uh, she's, they don't show her face yet. When, before she meets Vincent Vega. Mm -hmm. And they show her walking around the house just in her bare feet. And that scene is actually extended, but. The, for the regular like theatrical cut, it's um, it's cut, but the whole thing is her walking into the room, and it's just one big shot of her feet. And then, like, if you watch the extended cut, it's just more feet. <laughs> See, I'm telling you, like, he he especially loves fucking Uma Thurman's feet. That's you think about yeah. Kill Bill, and it's like wiggle your big toe. Yeah, like, how 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 long he focused on the damn feet? <laughs> so much toe, <laughs> all the toes. Oh my god! Which, by the way. Her daughter shows up in this movie. Uma Thurman's daughter. Yeah, is uh, Uma Thurman's and Ethan Hawke's daughter that she was. In oh Stranger, wow! She was in Stranger Things, and she showed up in this movie. I was like, this girl looks familiar. Right, it's a girl from Stranger Things. It's her kid, correct? Which person from Stranger Things? In the recent season, third season, she's the one that works at the freaking um. Uh, uh, the ice cream shop? Yes, that girl. Oh, I love her. Yeah, that girl. So, yeah, she was awesome. She is awesome. She's definitely awesome. So we'll definitely be seeing more of her in the future, hopefully, and doing great things. 
I hope so. I wish she was older. Yes. <laughs> Give her all the roles. So yeah, that's my take. Um, unfortunately, I had to leave the movie theater. Scoops ahoy! Right at the end, which sucked. But I got to finish the movie later, so it's all good. That's <laughs> why do you have to leave? I had to. I had to be somewhere, so I timed it. Oh, really. like, I was shit. like, all right, uh, I will see this movie, and it should be done by here. And then it was like, it was like go time. I went over there by bike, so. If I had the car, I would have finished it and then just gunned it by the car. But I had to get back home, then get the car. You can't time shit with the Tarantino movie. No, man. Especially when they put previews in the beginning. Not a lot. No, of previews, you're fucked. But, yeah, it's like four, it's 420. Just fucking start the movie right away. I don't need to see previews here right now. I'm on a time schedule. <laughs> <laughs> we got to go. We got shit to do. We're yeah. grown ass people. Actually, it was, a, it was a game night. So I had to play some um, board games, which is pretty fun oh nice yeah but shout Those out are to, fun. shout out to kaiju i i know i saw you there buddy i was deep in my story but uh shout out to 16 bit kaiju our our our, our hype man Machine right machine room hype man uh please guys you two guys you know spread it we on let anybody know bring your friends let everybody know bring your family And we need we, more goons in here too. We do, man. I, I, you know, I try to try to put it out. I try to put it out there. Man. You know, we bring who we could bring. <sighs> we <can't> <laughs> do what you can do. You know. <laughs> oh man, I got I got another story that just happened to me while getting out of work. But uh, if you got anything, go ahead, throw it in, dog. No. Who me? Yeah. Anything interesting happened this week? Um. Anything. Actually, yeah. Um, did I tell the whole story about what happened to my roommate? You told me, but was it on the podcast? I don't remember. I don't think so. So anyway, he's been having these really bad stomach pains. And so, was it last week? No, it was the week before. I had cooked this um, big meal the night that I made that Egyptian chicken and all that stuff. Mm. So I usually take my dogs out one more time in the middle of the night, like when people are asleep, like 2, 3, 4 in the morning. So I was taking the dogs out for a walk, and I hear his truck pull up, and he says his stomach's hurting real bad, and he's going to the hospital. I'm like, okay, well, do you need me to go? And he's like, well, if I need you, I'll call you. He never called me, and then they came back at, like, 9 in the morning. So I figure everything's okay. Mm -hmm. And then the next day was a Friday, um, and I went to go outside, and I hear him calling for me. And so I went downstairs, and he's, like, on the – he has a couch in his room, and he's, like, curled up in a ball. And he's, like, it still hurts. You know, they didn't do anything – I think I need to go back to the hospital. I'm like, well, do you need me to take you? He's like, yeah, if you can. I was like, okay. So go get ready, take him, all that stuff. And uh, they, they take him in for another CT scan, and they say um, his intestines, his lower intestines had ruptured. Ooh, damn. And it can be fatal. So they were rushing him to Las Cruces, New Mexico, Um for an emergency surgery and so they they took him with the lights on and everything and we followed we got there about an hour later 30 minutes later i think or an hour or something like that and they didn't do anything they hadn't done anything just put him in a room so we're like okay what are we, what are we gonna do so we get a hotel and stuff we get all you know settled in go to the hospital and still nothing they didn't do anything so he's like well go ahead and go home or you know go to the hotel get some sleep and then they said they're going to do the surgery in the morning i'm like okay so i couldn't sleep you know waiting for that kind of intense anticipation so it was me and his wife we didn't sleep for shit i maybe got two or three hours sleep and then he calls us in the morning they still haven't done anything it's they're still waiting for the surgeon to even look at the x-rays. I'm like, why would they rush you to a hospital for emergency surgery and then not do it? So the surgeon finally sees it, and he's like, I don't see a tear. It's just inflamed. So 
then my roommate has to call the hospital from here, talk to that doctor, tell him to call the doctor in there in Las Cruces and tell him what he saw and why he thinks that, you know, it's a rupture. Mm-hmm. Uh, come to find out it wasn't. It was just really, really inflamed and swollen. <clears throat> So they gave him a shit ton of antibiotics for like three, four days, and then sent him home, and he's fine. He has a, he's uh, got diagnosed with diverticulitis, and it can be fatal if you don't like watch your diet and all that stuff. So he's like eating all this healthy food now, which is good. And they starved him for like three, four days, so he came back home all skinny, and but he's better now. So the moral of the story is: eat healthy, ladies and gentlemen. Exactly. Which Don't is, eat like I do. It's kind of hard. <laughs> it's really hard. It's really hard. I love food. You know, it was this coworker. He's a Puerto Rican dude, and I called him Sabertooth, but now he's <laughs> called Logan because he has the. He looks. He straight up look like a Latino, uh, Leif Schreiber who plays Sabertooth and uh, yes. fucking <laughs> the Wolverine movie. Yeah. He straight up looked like that. Even la- even the smile and everything. So I've been like, you're fucking saber tooth, dog. Um, cool guy. But he stays, he stays, you know, he stays fit. So he was talking like, oh, you know, I was doing these dumbbells and my shoulders. Like, okay, dude, we get it. You work out, all right? We're fat. Right. <laughs> like, I get it, dude. They I just love rev, it, rev it all in your face. <laughs> He's not like that, but I was teasing him and shit. You know, it's like, I don't. I want to, but I'm lazy, man. I'm, fucking... I'm super lazy. Yes. There's those Peloton commercials, and they're talking about people working out, you know, when everybody's going to bed, or the people that get up at 6 a.m., and they're like, yeah, this isn't for everybody. I was like, yeah, that shit sure as hell ain't for me. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to get me on a on a fake bike for nobody. He's like, early in the morning is the best time. It's like, I like to sleep in, buddy. I can't. Yep. I can't do it. I, I, I mean, there's times when I have done it, and it does. You do feel great, but I, I like to. I like to sleep in. Uh, Danny Ad says it sucks when they don't know what you have exactly, and that's when when he's talking yeah. about doctors, and 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 that is true. And my mom recently went to the uh went to see a doctor yesterday, and they said that she had some bacteria in her stomach. Mm-hmm. Now they gave her all these freaking antibiotics and a whole bunch of freaking pills to take for the next 15 days. They say that it possibly she could have got it when she went to Puerto Rico because it's something that you get from the water. Makes sense because Puerto Rico is, you know, still dealing with water issues since the hurricane. So probably so. But the thing is that they say, like, you know, it's something that make your, you, you know, you get pain in your stomach and she hasn't had pain in her stomach. So she's like, I um, yeah. got it. But it's like, well, you got it. So we're going <laughs> to give you this. And then I tell my girl about it, and she's all like, huh, but the stomach needs bacteria to, you know, do its thing. So if they give her too many antibiotics, they, you know, it's risk of taking away all the bacteria. So they get Yeah, you know, and that's bad. Yeah, they got to make sure it don't fuck her up. And I'm like, well, now you got me all worried about these doctors because they tell her one thing or the other. <sighs> you know? All that jazz. All that fucking Utah jazz. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but going, we're going to direct away from that and go back to the work, my coworker, but uh, another, when we finally got taken, because we got to wait. Oh, wait, Syaxi's here. Hello, so I actually welcome to the machine room. I think she hasn't been here since the first episode. Where you been, girl? Where you been at? Yeah, oh, antibiotics. Where you stay? A bad on the stomach. Gotta get probiotics. That's what my girl said. You gotta get. Yeah. Pro- she needs probiotics, and I'm like, what are probiotics? And she's like, uh, any of them. And I'm like, okay, but what are probiotics? Like, you know, is it like? this is a probiotic or that's a probiotic and then I'll just fucking shove it into my mom's face like here eat this there's probiotic uh, yogurt and stuff now and it's really good for your stomach especially for people that have stomach issues like that and what it is is actually it helps stimulate the natural uh, bacteria that you have in your stomach Mm, well then I gotta get something like that for her to freaking dog on because 
I yeah. gotta watch out for her too, you know. And these the moms. I mean, it's like it's, it was like this tube and this tube and this tube, and then there's a the big one right here with all these pills. I'm like, what the fuck? It's too much. Shut you should up. see my my medicine, my, like eight or nine different things I take different every day. Mm. It's getting crazy. <laughs> Damn. And then I gotta take all this shit every day. They're like, yeah, I'm like, motherfucker. <laughs> Son of a bitch. I'll get there when I'm in my fucking. Soon, like next week, probably. <laughs> next week. And you get some gray in your beard. Oh, it's there. It's, you see it? It's right coming. Right yeah. Right, right, right here. This right here, little whites, and there's more whites on worlds. And then when it gets bigger, you just see all the white. You should put some dye in it. Put some red in there. Yep. Where's... Uh, so I actually asked, where's Mr. Bear? Who's Mr. Bear? Oh, he is... That's my dog. Oh. He's on the bed, I think. Hibernating. Yeah, he's that's, hibernating in the bed. That's what bears do. They hibernate. He got to go for a ride in the car, so now he's, like, chilling. I finally got... We went to the zoo when we were in Milwaukee, and it was actually a zoo where you actually see animals. Nice. You know. Not like Jurassic Park. Yes. Like the like the <laughs> zoos here, especially the one that's supposed to be the better one, is like where's the T Rex? You know, that's what I always say. Like, where's the T Rex? Cause there's nothing out there. Here is the whatever. I'm like, yeah. I don't see shit. I don't see shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, the fuck did I pay to come here if I want to see an animal, damn it. But then you see them and you're like, Oh, you're confined. I want you to be free. They're all sad and depressed. Yeah. Kind of like a gorilla we used to know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. We don't, we don't go talk about that because those are sad times. Sad times, Someone yeah. Homie's in prison for life. Someone should have kept their kid in check. That's what I'm saying. I want gorilla. <laughs> <laughs> are we talking about that gorilla? I'm oh, talking yeah, about yeah. a different Oh, I'm talking about that gorilla. Like, if someone kept their kid in check... Yeah, a certain fucking gorilla. If we're talking about that gorilla, then yeah, he'd mm -hmm. still be alive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm still whipping my dick out for Harambe, though. Yeah. Till this day, I don't know who came up with that, but it's I'm gonna get a, I'm gonna get a whole back tattoo of Harambe. <laughs> be like, peep this. <laughs> Rest in peace for life. Uh, throwing up the deuces with a bandana yep. on his head. Yep. Fucking the gun wing angels in the back. Exactly. <laughs> Live and die in LA kind of shit. <laughs> <laughs> With some uh, Chicano ass lettering. Ah, uh, yes. For, for life. <laughs> People really need to keep their kids in check. There was this one woman who had these two kids and they literally went over the, the fence, I guess, whatever. And started like almost running to the damn flamingos, and I'm like, the fuck! Look at them. The fuck are you doing? I think any people that do that let their kids do that, especially like, you know, gorillas, tigers, lions, stuff like that. As Bears. soon as their kid is over the fence, I'm like, that the parent should be in prison. <laughs> yes. Yes. Or it's so their fault that the, that that should happen. It's not the animal's fault. The animal was just sitting there. And you're like, who's this kid? <laughs> what the fuck you doing in my crib? Yeah, <laughs> that's my house. <laughs> I'm confined, but I'm going to beat your ass. My mom would have just done that thing. That would have happened with my little. She would have, like, death gripped my arm and looked me dead in my soul. And be like, I'm fucking you up when we get home. <laughs> <laughs> you just wait. And you're in the whole car, right? You're like... Nah, she she ain't gonna do nothing. Nah, and you get home as soon as that door closes, you just start getting the fuck beat out of you. And then she just start going John Wick on your ass. Yeah, with a chancla. She goes fucking IP man on your ass, <laughs> just <laughs> beating the shit out of you. You on the ground just taking punches to the face. Yeah. Pa, 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 pa. <laughs> Oh, man. Kai just talking about how his mom wouldn't wait. And I've witnessed this with a friend of mine when I was a kid. And this kid was smaller. He was a smaller black kid. And he was chilling with me. It was in front of my house. And it's gated. And we're chilling. We're talking about blah. And then 
I was curious too. It's like, hey, I thought you were supposed to be home, whatever. He's like, no, no, I'm good. You know, I did my homework, whatever. Yeah, I get to get out a little bit. I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. And then car pulls up. It's his mom. And he's like, Robert, go over here. It's like, oh, wait, that's my mom. And he goes, walks over. What up, mama? He's like, oh, if you don't <laughs> start beating his ass. Right <laughs> And he's all like Miguel, like, oh, mama, mama, I'm sorry, mama, mama. And I'm just on the porch, just staring. I'm just like, okay. And he's wow. Like beating, bah, 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 like beating him against the fucking fence. Like, boy, I told you, you can't go home. You better get home. You and you know what? I, I had nothing to do. She's beating this kid in front of my fucking house against the gate. And I can't be like saying anything. And, that's his. That's her kid. So I just open the door and go right back in the house, close the door, and just look out the window and see the beating commands, and then grab his ass. Oh, get in the car! And he's all like, "Mama, I'm sorry." And then drive off. And I was like, "Well, that was awkward, but hilarious at the same time." Didn't they say why or what he did? I. I don't think he was supposed to be out. I think he was supposed to be grounded or something. Like, the, it was a good kid, but he kept hanging with the wrong crowd and shit. Like, eventually, oh. like, I had my little basement wrestling going on, and then he was, he, you know, he could be a part of it. But even when I had my little basement wrestling, I had rules. I was like, you guys got to be cool. You can't be affiliated with stuff. You got to be, you know, I was like, you got to be good at school. Whatever shit like that. You know, I didn't want, you know, no fucking hoodlums to be in my shit. And I wanted to be at least a good role model, even at a, as a teenager. And these were little kids. So he was, he was a younger kid than me. Like I'm in high school, right? He's probably like seventh or eighth grade. And he would be, he would be a part of it, but he constantly like cried when we did moves on him or whatever, he'll get hurt and then he'll cry. And I understand because, you know, like a, wow. year, like a year before that or two years before that, I was a crybaby like crazy, you know, I cried like crazy. But, you know, we tried to toughen him up. Like, you know, you know, you got to you gotta deal with it. You got to deal with it. Uh, then eventually he was too much and then he joined like a bike gang. <laughs> like a like wow. bicycle gang. And they will call themselves after fucking the hottest rap groups then so those the cash money millionaires and the no limit soldiers and I'm like alright man whatever you want to do so who knows what wow. happened to him now who knows mm-hmm. um, Kaiju says my mom took me out of class one time in 5th grade to clean my room and brandished the belt in the hallway and gave me the option to get it there or at home mm. that's fucked up mm, at least she gave you an option dog what, you, what did you choose though <laughs> Yeah, what was your choice? <laughs> what was your choice? Baby Coke. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll see the choice eventually. He chose, chose home. home. Yeah, Good. wife's choice. Wife choice. Yeah, wife's choice. <laughs> My mom used to do this thing where she'd you'd be in public and she's like, we can either do this at home or in the bathroom. I'm like, okay, I'm just going to choose home and then hope that you forget. <laughs> Act like she forgot at home that she like, oh, one more thing. <gasps> you start having a dope ass fucking fight. You know, it'd be funny if I made a video like that. I need to have a cool ass kid or whatever. But it's like, you know, it's like, I'm gonna beat you when we get home. And then they get home and it's like this dope ass martial art fight between the, the Matrix, like the first <laughs> yeah. time you fought Morpheus. Neo's fighting Morpheus. <laughs> Come on, stop trying to hit me and hit me. You think that's air you're breathing now? Hmm. I should tell people that. (laughs) You're a dumb motherfucker. Yeah. You think that's air you're breathing now? (laughs) (laughs) And then walk away. Just walk away. You should do that to like somebody like a panhandler or something. Give them some change and just be like. Thank you, sir. Thank you. God bless you. Like you think that's the air you're breathing now, and then just walk away and just mind fuck the shit out of them. They'd be like, <sighs> "Oh man, that sounds more threatening, though." You think that's air you're breathing does. now? <laughs> and then you just you know, go home to their little, their little radio flyer wagon box, and just what the fuck? I feel bad for like the homeless people that come up and you're just like ignoring them. We're such awful people. I didn't ignore him. I straight up tell him no after living in California. And, and Danny can probably 
assist on this. They're fucking everywhere. I'm like, no, nah, bro, I don't have shit. Even if I do, I wouldn't give it to you because I don't want to be in your shoe. <laughs> and that's shitty to say, but I learned that in the first year I lived in California because I used to just, I used to give money to everybody. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, sure, here's 20 bucks, here's five, here's 10. And then I was like, where'd all my money go? And it's you're giving it to them all the time. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You gave homeless people 20 bucks? Damn, were you balling like that? No, I really wasn't. I had fucking, um, you know, shitty minimum wage jobs. But I thought that was the good thing that you're supposed to do to help people. And I used to give them rides and shit. And Damn. After I realized that they were just taking advantage of me, I quit. I, I stopped doing all that shit. Oh, yeah, it's true. When I was in college, this one homeless dude was all like, hey, what's up? And I was like, hey, how you doing, dog? Here's some change. He's like, all right, thank you, governor. He said governor and shit. I'm like, all right, whatever. And then other day will come, and then he'll see me walking. He's like, hey, what up, governor? I was like, hey, what's up? He's like, how you doing, buddy? Blah, blah, blah. Have a conversation. He's like, yeah, man, and here's some more change and shit. Then another day happened. He's like, hey, what up, governor? I'm just like gunning it. He's like, hey, governor. <laughs> He's coming at me. Until he finally got the message that I'm not giving no any more fucking change. No more know. money. Don't come at me all the damn time. You could come at me and have a conversation and be like, yeah, what's up? But don't expect me to give you, like, fucking change all the damn time. Um, the last and final straw why I don't give him money anymore is we used to live in Austin, Texas. And my mom went to, you know, just down the street to, like, a convenience store just to get a couple things. And they used to be all over and uh, this guy chased her down, and she had to jump in her car and lock the doors. Damn. And so after that, we we don't give out money anymore. And, you know, that's, that's sad to say because there are good people out there that do need help. But it's like, it's so hard when you don't have much, and then they, they want to take advantage of you. Um, Danny says, I had a guy cussing at us on the side of the road just because no cars rolled their windows down. Yeah, you know, some of them are fucking crazy. I I had a guy recently like ask me do I have any change and I'm like no no I don't have any I don't have anything and I'm like fucking dogging Wendy's you know in his face and shit like that but you know I just got out of work just dropped up LP it's a gas station and he's asking me for this and I'm just eating my burger and I'm like no I have no change I don't you know I'm I barely carry cash and change with me all right it's all yeah It could Sorry, happen, dude. though. It could happen. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, it's it cool, does man. happen. Things. I've seen there's panhandlers that get those Obama phones and then like a, a free card reader from Square or PayPal, and then they're just balling out. <laughs> Motherfuckers, <laughs> man. Motherfuckers. Well, this guy was all, you know, blah, blah, give me this. And I'm like, no, man, I got nothing. I got nothing. Then I'm already annoyed. Like, no, dude, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't have anything. And he's like, oh, well, you know, well, damn you, I'm a veteran, and I didn't go out there and fight for you. You know, blah, blah, blah. He just starts going off because he's a veteran. And, and like, I'm like, and then I tell him, it's like, dude, I, nobody told you to go out there. So. <laughs> right. I didn't tell you to do that shit. I didn't ask you to be out there getting shot at. Yeah, dude. I, I was at home chilling. You could have been doing that too. <laughs> like, I'm sorry for you, but don't, don't give me attitude. Look, look, Kaiju, as a vet myself, I have a problem giving money to them. You see, Kaiju? Kaiju gets it. Yeah. Like, look, I understand people go through some hard fucking times and, and shit happens, but, you know, there's got to gotta be something. I always say, like, the airport hires like crazy, so just get all these people a job at the airport, man. It's fucking, they can make it. They live, they, they, they live outside, so they could deal with the outside weather. They got it. Hands down, that's all you got to do is easy job, good money, and then you ain't got nothing else going on with their lives, so they could dedicate their whole life to working at the airport and shit. And then they could sleep there. <laughs> they could, man. I know cold Or if you get into the medical field, like if you're a nurse or a doctor, then you got beds for life. So, damn. Do room and board, so there you go. There you go, just live in the hospital. Man, that's crazy. Like, like people who live, work at a hospital get paid, but man, it's like your whole life there, too. Yeah, you spend your whole fucking life. And then even if you do get to go home, they can call you back in. Mm. I've is... seen my mom get called into work at four in the morning and just fucking peel tires all the way to work. Shit. You're like, oh, good. Finally bed. Beep, beep. Oh. <laughs> Not for you. 
<laughs> then you get over there and there's a fucking episode of Grey's Anatomy and shit. Like, we got this guy fucking out there. But I love you. It's like, God damn it, do your rounds. <laughs> if it's normally like something stupid, like they had 10 nurses and then they call her in. And my mom's a nurse too. And they were like, yeah, we need you to put in a pick line or an IV into that patient. And you're like, she was like, well, what about those 10 nurses sitting over there? Oh, they don't count. Uh huh. Fantastic. Yeah, that's wonderful. Fantastic. Uh, Kaiju over here saying, all vets are given the same opportunities before we get out to set up for life after military, and they don't listen. That is true. That is true. I'm sure. I don't know. I'm like... Look, I, I, I support our fellow uh, ladies and gentlemen who go out there and serve us. But I also feel like it's fucked up that we got pe- ladies and gentlemen out there serving us. It's half and half, but I don't get, I don't, I don't take it, I don't, I don't take it upon the people who are actually serve it. I take it upon the government who are actually making these people do things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. And you know the whole thing about support the troops. It's like, yeah, but I don't support the people telling them what to do because I don't think they should be out there fighting wars that I don't agree with. They shouldn't. My my one of my best friends from high school, and you 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 seen him or yeah, you seen him in my videos. Uh, Josue, big guy, Sue. Yeah, uh, he served the Marines for four years. And yeah, he told me some, well, he hasn't told me a lot, but he told me some stuff and you could tell like, you know, he, he, he went through some stuff. He came back and he's fine. You know, he got kids and he jumps from, uh, you know, he got jobs. So he's good. He's actually very, very well now. When he first came back though, it was difficult, you know, that readjustment into society, into all yeah. this stuff and, 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 and getting a job and, and just settling in. It was hard adjustment and it was hard for me to kind of see that because he was my boy we fucking talked matrix like crazy he was all down <laughs> for for my dreams and desires of making movies and and this guy was going to be like my leading man so i was the i was nice. the freaking scorsese and this guy was going to be my my de niro or my or my dicaprio you know <laughs> kind of shit so but then he went off to the Marines, and then when he came back, it was just like it was my friend there, but it also felt a little bit distant. But in time, you know, we got back that that how he was. We, yeah, they change you. Yeah. They That's their whole mission to go through, especially the Marines. They want to break you down and build you back up. And when they get done or you get discharged or whatever, they actually take classes before going back home and they have to learn to start using people's first names again and they have to stop using like initialisms and acronyms for everything and mm-hmm. they have this whole thing about reintroducing them into into society and some of them just don't some of them just they get stuck in that mindset and they just think that you know everybody's going to follow suit and they don't mm-hmm. yeah because not everybody served you know they don't know that life it just, it- I see some people join just because it's nothing else. It's like the solution, you know. I I knew someone and she was joining the the Air Force just because she saw it as a solution. Like, okay, I do this, it's easy money and they're gonna, you know, supply me with this and it'll be good for education. And it was like, Yeah, that's fantastic. I was you know, I was supporting but I also didn't because that meant she goes off, you know, she goes off, who knows what's going to happen. And, but I was like supporting all the way and unfortunately it didn't go through, but you don't want to, you don't want to see that. You don't want to hear that. Someone that you know, someone that you love is going to go off and serve and you're like, you're going to spend the whole time where I was worried as shit for my boy being in the Marines for four years. And thank God, thank a God, nothing happened to him. He came back well, and, you know, now we get to bullshit whenever I can. That's good. Yep. I had um, knew multiple people that went to Iraq and Afghanistan, and I had a friend that was in the whole Fallujah fight, and uh, 
it's bad. I mean, especially how it affects them mentally when they come back home. It's really rough, and I, I don't wish that upon anybody. And then when I have two sisters that are twins, and both of them wanted to serve, and, and when they first said it, I said no. I was like, they're going to treat you like a stapler. You're just a thing to them. You're going to go out there and get shot at. And it, it scared the shit out of me. But uh, one went to the Army and one went to the Air Force. And they grew up spoiled. You know, whatever they couldn't get from our parents, they got from their grandparents or their babysitter or whatever. So they were always kind of spoiled anyway and did what they wanted to. So going and serving gave them that structure that they needed and, and responsibility. And um, I think it made them better people than they would have been opposed to not going. Mm-hmm. Um, so for some people, it's a benefit to go. Yeah, it's true. And then Air Force and Army are kind of like, well, Air Force for sure is like a safe bet. Army, yeah, I guess a little bit. It depends on what, like, what section you get put in? Well, she went in as a, a chaplain assistant. So, I mean, all she did was, like, help people with, like, religious assistance and stuff like that. So neither one of them got to be deployed, you know, luckily. And uh, the one in the Army, she actually went back after her term. She signed, She was in the reserves, and then she went back. And now she's a drill sergeant training Marines. So she's a badass. Oh, there you go. Uh, Kaiju says that they just get to play with toys, so. <laughs> there you go. I love toys. One of the, one of my uh, grammar school freaking uh, love or whatever shit, she ended up joining the National Guard. And wow. And now she still works for the National Guard, so life seems good. She's fucking living in a high rise or something <laughs> downtown or whatever. She got money, so. Life treating you good. Life treating her good, and, and and clearly, I look back and it's like I could not keep up with that. So that's fine. That, that, right. way, that didn't work out, but it, you know, it works. That's out. That's cool, people. though. Yeah, some people are do. There are the success stories, but mm-hmm. still, if somebody were to ask me, "Hey, should I do this?" I'm gonna say no because I don't want you to die. Mm-hmm. <laughs> My brother, before you know, obviously before he died, um, he had talked about going to the army, and I was like, "No, please don't. Just." Please think of something else that you would like to do. Let that be like your last decision. I'm going to tell you straight up while we were in high school and towards our senior year. And it's like the come for you at fucking senior year. They say they they were trying to recruit two of my friends and one of them was Sony. So Sony almost was going to join the army. It was him and my other friend. And no, not even just him and my other him and my other friend and our other friend who eventually married my friend. So her and him both were considering all of them to go to the army, and it didn't pan out. They didn't go through it. Thank God, everybody's fine as it is now. But I remember that the recruiter was talking to them, blah blah yeah, blah, and then he come to me and it's like, "What are you? You want to join?" Like, nope. No, you think, nope. <laughs> no, I'm good. I don't want to hear that shit. Uh, Kaiju says, the army kind of just teaches you to deal with bullshit more than any other branch. Uh, he, I'm honestly glad I'm out now because I can't deal with the current president. Ha! Huh. For sure. Amen. For sure. <laughs> Amen to that. We were talking about that earlier. I was on the phone with a friend of mine from back in the day. Um, and, uh, I hope this doesn't sound like paranoid delusional stuff, but I was like, you know, I keep my passport on standby in case, you know, something goes into some weird handmaid's tale type shit. You know, I'm two hours from Mexico. I'm fucking out of here. I've got like my, uh, papers to go to Ireland on standby. Like I'm not fucking around with with this president. (laughs) What is that called? Asylum? Yeah. Where can I find asylum? Yeah. My just... asylum papers are for Ireland. Um, It's next year, right? That it finally... We could do something? Maybe? Hopefully. Next year we can vote. Alright. Let's get this motherfucker I'm, out. I'm voting like a motherfucker. Wait, shouldn't like the candidates... Candidates been... Damn, I can't even say it. Candidates. Right? Candidates. Shouldn't they be out 
now all over the place. They are. Okay. Who is There's it? like, there's 20 different people trying to be a Democratic president. Is Bernie still one of them? Bernie, yeah, Bernie Sanders. That's the motherfucker we need to get. I think he'd be a good vice president, honestly. Like, right. I, I think, um, what's your name? The chick that looks like a Chicana. I think her as president with Bernie Sanders as her vice president would be perfect. Because the they're... That, you're talking about the chick that really, like, like she has no filter? Like, she... she oh, really, yeah, she's a badass. Yeah, she's yeah, a yeah. fucking badass. Like, and I'm not just saying that because I want a female president. I think she'd be awesome, and I think that having somebody that has the kind of um, experience Bernie Sanders has would be great as a vice president so that he could be an advisor. Mm-hmm. For somebody that's that, you know, out, not just because she's outspoken, because she has a great plan. Anybody has a great plan outside of Homeboy right now. <laughs> <laughs> My sleeping chihuahua would be a better president. Like, your sleeping chihuahua would fucking act even better on Twitter. It's, it, yeah, it's, it's like or a, in the news. It's like a teenage girl with this guy. Oh, it's awful. It's just... fucking embarrassing, too. Because to, I have friends in, in other countries, and, you know, and I do, te- I do uh, not tech support, but I do customer service for Canada. And I have to hear people all day talk about, yeah, blah, 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 and you're president. I'm like, I didn't vote for that motherfucker, so don't <laughs> call him mine. He's not mine. <laughs> right? How do we, man, we look like shit to the world. We look like fucking ignorant. But then again, like I said before, you kind of, you know, the way our country is it, treating each other and how we've been acting, you get the president you deserve. And if that's the one that we deserve because we're all acting like assholes, then we need to wake ourselves up. True that. But there's a lot of ignorant motherfuckers out there. And this leads to my story at work from the way back to the fucking... Because we got to be taken from the break room to the office mm-hmm. where my car is at. And this dude was behind us, or he's in the van, he's sitting behind me, he's just on the phone, and he's just like, what? What the fuck you want, girl? Look, I don't want to do nothing with you, girl. Are you over there crying and shit? What the fuck? I said it's over and shit. I don't got nothing to do. I don't give a shit, man. I'll take care of that kid. Like, he was really going, like, hard, like, yeah, motherfucker, it's over. I don't give a fuck, nigga, motherfucking shit. I'm slime. I'm Reggie. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm <laughs> going to my friend Ortiz, and I'm like, on slime, like I'm gonna use on that. Slime, though. Uh, it just sounds funny. On slime, on Reggie. I'm like, who's Reggie? Why is he saying on Reggie? <laughs> 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 so this hood lingo, like real deep, fucking South Side hood lingo. I don't know about. Oh my just, god! But somewhere at the end of it, you know what? It's funny. No, I think I re- no, yo, I recorded it. <laughs> no shit. Please play that back because. I didn't get the really good part at the end, but I recorded because I wanted her to listen to this shit. I was like, look, at, listen to this bullshit. All right, where are you at? Where are you at? Okay, right here. Let's see what we got. Can you hear? Yeah. I'm slapped. Like, I'm, I'm over that shit, folks. So it's best you get over that shit too and move on. You know. True. You hear me like? I'm slapped. All right, bro. But just look. Just stop calling my phone, bro. I said what I said, bro. <laughs> That's it. Just leave me alone, bro. That's all you gotta do is leave me alone, bro. Leave him alone. Drink. drink. But then he goes on, like, at the end of the conversation, just like, you know, I don't give a fuck, but I hope you die. I hope you fucking die, bitch. And I ain't gonna cry for you. I ain't gonna do that. Like, wow. Shit. This is why bitches go fucking crazy. It's like, I'm um, sly, though. I'm um, sly. <laughs> <laughs> And this is the same guy that one day me and me and LP are just talking about our freaking uh, Red Dead Redemption adventure, right? But he doesn't know this. He just hears us talking. So we're just like, yeah, man, you know, and then this and then I went in the bar, right? I went to the saloon and I just like punched this dude and then I started shitting off the place. He was like, oh, shit, you motherfuckers crazy. Y'all got to hang with y'all. <laughs> and I'm like, 
no, no, we talking about Red Dead Redemption. It's like, what's that? It's like, this video game is like, oh, shit, I thought you motherfuckers was for real and shit. No, I'm going to say these <laughs> niggas crazy, you know? like, I'm like, okay, dog. <laughs> on Reggie, though. On Reg, on Slime, I shot that motherfucker in the face. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. It's, it's interesting. It's now we have new lingo here in the machine room. Yes. Yeah, this nigga. Everything that I say is on Slime, for on real. On Slime. <laughs> for Reggie, though. <laughs> oh. Man, fantastic. God, that reminds me of something Vigor used to say. And it was like, what? <laughs> it was like on my something. I can't remember if it was some Chicago shot. Yeah. This, apparent, man, it, there was this other cat that used to work there that he would talk that kind of, that Southside lingo. And I was really curious. I was like, dude, like, write, write down the the slang and then tell me what it means because I want to know this the definition yeah yes I want to know the definition to this I thought it would be hilarious to use in a video because that's just funny you know he never did and he was a little bitch ass motherfucker too so of course yeah but I tried to look it up too I remember one time I tried to look it up like Chicago Southside okay. lingo or something urban like dictionary yeah some shit man. Cause on slime on Reggie, like why? Who's on Reggie? Reggie though. Who the fuck is Reggie? Why are you putting on Reggie? I understand on my mama, but on Reggie? The fuck? Or maybe that was the name of the kid. Maybe. Hmm. Who knows? Where on Reggie, yo? On <laughs> Reg on Reggie, this podcast is shit. Thank oh. you. Shout out to <laughs> 69247. <laughs> Thank you. What do you do to that hair to keep it so magnificent, girl? I, I don't. <laughs> that's, that's my um that's my routine. I don't I don't put any product on it. I just I wash and condition it and I let it air dry so it gets curly and I just leave it that way. Just natural. That's the same response I give when they're like, what do you do, you know, to keep your, like, what was it, last Friday? This, um, I do the Korean flight and it has a Korean rep representative and she has like this little, this little mic just like this one right here, right? This little mic like this and a speaker hanging here and she uses right. it so she, we could hear her better because she don't have to, so she don't have to scream, which is hilarious because we have her say something like, put all your arms and legs inside a vehicle and enjoy the right kind of shit like that, right? Right. <laughs> uh, and then she said, your beard is very nice. How do you maintain your beard? And I'm like, nothing. I really don't do anything. This is pure, like, don't want to fuck with it kind of shit. So I just let it just grow. And just let it be. Yeah, I just don't do anything. She's like, oh, my brother, he tried to grow a beard, blah, blah, blah. And it's... I, I don't do anything with this. Some other dude, when I had it really big and I was at Wendy's, this dude who's taking care of me was like, that's a great beard. How do you take care of blah, blah, blah? I'm like, I, that condition, I guess. <laughs> I don't do anything. I just really I would wash and condition it, but that's about it. I don't do anything to maintain it. I that's put, really like, the key. De depending if you have like greasy stuff, then you, you want to wash it more. But honestly, just leave it alone. Mm -hmm. Like people that are like African descent kind of people that have that kind of hair and they're always like doing shit. I'm like, just let it be natural. Just be natural. I'd I dated a girl, African-American. She was always wearing wigs and stuff. She took her wig off one time, and she had gray hair. And I was like, I love that. They can run my fingers through it. It's fucking nice. Yes. Like, and just it, let it be natural. The same thing for for my ex. She always, she was African-American. She always wearing wigs. But there was the time when she would be natural and just, like, had a natural poof. Yeah. Really fucking cute, you know? And I, it pref is. I prefer the natural poof. But, you know. Hashtag poof. Poof. Like, my <laughs> my niece, she's Puerto Rican, and my niece is, like, 
a model. Like I'm surprised she uh-huh. isn't a model yet. Like she takes care of her body. She works out. She's from Florida, so you know how they are in Florida. To care about oh, she works out. She's gorgeous, and she, her pictures look like she's a model, and she should be a model. Like. 100% support her to be a model. I always said, like, if I were to make a movie, I would have her in my movie as well because not only is, is, is she smart and beautiful, but she's a pure geek like me, you know? And growing up, I, um, we were really, really attached, and I'm her favorite uncle. And once in a blue moon, she'll, like, geek out with me about stuff, you know, like, oh, this, this, and that, blah, blah, blah. And I'm about to go off tangent and talk about how sweet and cute we are together. Um, <laughs> when, when she was a little girl, I'll be just sleeping and then I wake up and she'll just be like laying in front of me, just looking at me. And I'm like, uh, uh, hi. And she's like, Hey, and I'm like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm just watching you sleep, waiting for you to wake up. And I'm like, Oh, well, I'm up. <laughs> and, and then, you know, we'll hang out and shit, but I haven't seen her in years since they moved to Florida. Oh, wow. So... When I finally go to Florida, which was a couple years ago, uh, I was kind of nervous of meeting all of them, like her and her two brothers, because it's been a while. So I don't know if we still got, you know, that connection and shit like that. You know, they're grown up now. They got kids, not her. And Mm -hmm. I see them and it's still cool, whatever. But I'm really nervous to see her because to me, she's still that little girl. You know, she's still that cute little girl. And I don't want, I'm worried that she's grown up and she's not going to be all like loving her uncle anymore. You just don't want her to grow up and be bougie. Yes. So sure, (laughs) sure enough, I'm sleeping once again and she finally visits where I'm staying at her mom's house and I open my eyes and guess who's there laying in front of me looking at me sleep. Aww. Just that's like, awesome just like she did when she was little and uh, man my heart is melting right now i miss her so much and i wish we still like i'm still kind of mad at my siblings for like spreading out across the fucking nation but like mine dad yeah but they're doing fa- fantastic over there and, and and she's a great girl and i miss her to death um death death with an f it was just it was it was cute to see that she's still the little girl that i remember you know and right. once again, I hope she's still the little girl I remember when I see her. <laughs> so yay. They made me weepy. I know. I'm here I'm here to bring the tears in the machine. <laughs> <laughs> the simple ass. Yes. On Reggie motherfucker. On on slime. On uh, slime. <laughs> how did they even get to that conversation right there? Oh I don't because know. She, Oh, because her hair. Her hair is like naturally. Oh, curly. Okay. She has naturally curly hair. She never, like, brings it down. And she has naturally curly hair. Actually, she put up a new picture today. Not new. I said new. New. uh, New. Uh, For people that don't know, this is how we talk normally. We just, like, 50,000 topics off the top of our head. Yes. Um, She put up a new picture today. And and I'm telling you, she should be a model. Uh, What the hell is her name on here? (laughs) There it is. Chief Keef 98. You know what? Actually, I'm afraid to show it because the guys are in here. Um, I need I need one with just her puffy hair. Hashtag poof. Poof hair. God damn it! All her pictures are like I don't want to show anybody. Because <laughs> <laughs> I don't need you guys fucking trying to hit on my damn niece. Beat your Bunch ass. of thirsty motherfuckers. Just cover up the name so they can't look her up. That's true. I need one with just curly hair. Oh, there's one. That's cute. Oh, okay. Here's one. The fucking innocent, cute, curly hair. Damn it. How am I going to cover the name? Damn. I Let can't. the screen cover the name. You know, here, what I'm going to do, right? I'm going to... Click on the picture make it bigger? No, no, no. Um, uh, uh, screenshot it and then crop it. There you go. Yeah, and you guys can't follow you, cause you'd be an extra right now. I gotta protect my my little. Boy. <laughs> <laughs> I had this fucking my, my baby. I got a fucking uh, a fuck boy at work, and I'm hoping he's not following her because he'd be like going after whoever is in my friends on Instagram and shit. And I don't want him fucking like being thirsty all over my knees. Speaking of that, you want to hear a fucked up story? Uh, yes. 
well <laughs> while you're you're doing that i'm done already so <laughs> uh we just have this friend and drummer uh his name is wayne and i'm gonna say all this truthfully because i i guarantee they'll never hear this yet and uh, so we're like 17, 18, and he is 17. And uh, we used to always give him shit for being the virgin. Mm-hmm. You know, like, blah, blah, blah. Hey, how's it going, virgin? You know, that kind of stuff. Like, not like mean. It was just kind of teased him for being that. No, mean. And, no, mean. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> not like, hey, fucker, hope you die because you're a virgin. No, it was nothing <laughs> like that. So um, we went one day to say something like that. And uh, he goes, well, no, not anymore. And we looked at him like, really? He goes, yeah, I fucked your cousin in your room while you were sleeping there with her. Oh, shit. What the and I fuck? Look, yeah. And I went, are you fucking serious? And I just walked out. I just got up and left because I was going to beat the shit out of him. And, uh, but was it yeah, it, it really ruined the relationship, like the friendship. And uh, I didn't talk to him for years. And then... We kind of just like refound each other again and just kind of squashed it. And we we played in a band again for a while, but it it really fucked up things. And um, that whole story kind of reminded me of that for some reason. But yeah, Jesus. Well, we're gonna go to that to my <laughs> little niece. <laughs> See, there, there she is with her naturally curly. Hair. Wow, that's amazing hair. You see? That's gorgeous. I love that. Yeah, and she keeps it real like that. And that's what I'm doing. And she's Puerto Rican. And we, you know, her, her father is uh, 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 a black Puerto Rican, you know, dark skinned black Puerto Rican, Afro uh, African American descent. And the mother is, well, not like me. My, my my side of the family, mostly the genes come from my mom's side, and that's mostly of uh, African-American descent kind of thing. While my father was the Taino, the fucking, um, you know, Native Americans of uh, yeah. Puerto Rico. So I didn't get that gene because my father had long, beautiful fucking hair and shit and didn't go bald. I get, my mom's genes fucked me over, but... <laughs> Besides the point, the point. Um, so that girl has that kind of hair, and she I, she doesn't focus on freaking. First of all, if you're in Florida, it's like a waste of time to try to keep it straight all the no, time. No, you can't do that in Florida. No, but she always had that curly hair, and she works it, and that's what I'm just saying. Like, work your natural hair. Yeah, just keep it natural. Mm-hmm. That's the moral <laughs> of the story. That whole damn, <laughs> that whole damn moment. It reminds me of a, a Puya song, that Puerto Rican metal band. They have a song called Keep It Simple. There you go. So we're going to go re-edit this in the video. And when I put up that picture of her, it's going to be that damn Just heavy cut it metal out. song. Yeah. <laughs> Keep it simple. <laughs> Actually, it's a chill song. You really oh. like it. I'll send it to you later. Because when you say heavy metal, I just keep... Keep it simple. I mean, they're like a metal band, but not every song is like like that. <laughs> they have songs with like trumpets and saxophones and shit. <laughs> it's really cool. Breaking Boundaries. Fantastic. What up to the eight people in this room? Uncle H? Yes. How you doing? And I think that's the only other new face I've seen. Is uh, Sissy Nine Twenty Four Seven still here? Loving your hair? And now I think he left. Oh. Last I checked, he left because I was like, well, "That was out of the blue," and then nothing. It's gone. Bounced. <laughs> it's all about the gingers. The gin, the gingers, or the genders. Gingers. <laughs> okay, I was like, "What? Why is it all about the genders?" Uh, it's not. It's not about gender. <laughs> yeah. Is- see, and Gina knows about Puya. Puya sound like a cartoon. Puya. Um, and then they did another band, or the guitarist did that was really good, but I forget it right now. Um, but I think we had. I mean, we're like an hour in already to bring up the topic of the the show. I know we for, we had something, but man, this has been going great. <laughs> um, <laughs> we didn't. We want to talk t- about addiction, right? Yes. Yes, yes, that's what I wanted to talk about. I wanted to talk oh, about the subject. Oh, I know who that is. That's Heather that was on the podcast. 
Oh! And Uncle H. Yeah. She was just talking about buttholes. <laughs> <laughs> That's all we talk about all the time. Oh, hello, Heather. Thank you for taking my spot that time. I much appreciate it. You were the first <laughs> one, and you guys did a fantastic job because I watched it. Does. I watched it afterwards, and I, I loved every second of it. Yeah, it was, it was podcast gold. Yes, it was, and you guys missed it. Shame on you. But then again, it, it was just the second show, and now we're Ocho in, baby. The Ocho. The Ocho. I have to sneeze again. <laughs> Everybody at the same time. <laughs> Bless Shut. you. Okay, thank you. Damn. <laughs> Oh, I was you. streaming earlier and I sneezed and I was like, that made my stomach hurt for some reason. Ooh, man, you just brought something else in my head because someone talked about dream that I know and she was all like, I had a dream that Bahamut was in it and he went in between my legs and then and I was like, the fuck? Okay, she was all scared to go to sleep and I'm like, all right, well, <laughs> good night, have, uh, have fun. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. But yes, addiction, right? That's where I wanted to go to. This podcast was supposed to go into that direction, but this was actually a good one where, you know, you guys are being involved and we're going on and talking and talking. Yeah, and we're just riffing. Yeah, and we had a great talk about, like, I forgot everything, uh, military and shit like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but Thanks to Kaiju. Yes, thank you, Kaiju. But, you know, this, I mean, this could go to the military thing where people come back from military and then they're like gain an addiction or even the addiction of being just there again. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, because that's all they know. Um, But I don't want I, I don't mean addiction as just in that sense. Well, it kind of in that sense, because addiction can mean anything. You could be addicted to drugs, could be addicted to to it could be sexual addiction. It could be. Ah, uh, addiction, consumer addiction, it could... Addiction, addiction to, to buttholes, yes. Definitely, definitely addiction to buttholes. And, 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 yeah. Or us being addicted to John Wick. Uh, yes, or freaking, if you're Tarantino, <laughs> yes, Kaiju feet. addicted to feet. God damn it, I don't need to see that many feet. Can I get the... Can addicted to love? Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Might as For well sure. face it, yo, addicted to addicted love. Addicted to love. <laughs> Um, is, have is, you ever seen that show, My Strange Addiction? No, but I heard of it. That will fuck your head up because there's people with some crazy dick. Like there's the lady that was eating that Comet bleach cleaner. There's the people that are like addicted to popping balloons. There's people addicted to fucking eating glass, and, and people are fucking crazy. And that show makes me feel really normal. If the person eat glass, are they like? Um, damn it! What's his name? Is it Cameron Crow? No. Yes. The Gladiator. What's his name? That's Russell Crow. Russell Crow. There you go, Cameron Crow. Well, there's a Cameron <laughs> Crow out there somewhere. Okay, is it is somewhere? It, is it the movie with uh, Russell Crow, the Virtuosity? You remember that movie? No. Oh my God! It's uh, Denzel Washington and Cameron uh, Cameron Crow. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no camera girl. There's a Washington and Russell Crowe, and he's a he's a program that they use. They have inmates testing it, and it's to train uh, police officers to uh, take care of situations. And the mm-hmm. guy who created this program and this AI and this virtual reality program made him a psychotic motherfucker like he's based on all these popular iconic uh cycles and serial killers all mixed into one wow so denzel is the one guy who was a cop but he's an inmate who did the program and almost took him down but the the, the they wanted it to shut down and the guy who created it was like they're not gonna kill you i'm gonna save you and he had a way to bring it to life yes his name was uh sid 6.7 so he brings it to life using nano machines i think or something whatever he brought it to life so now this thing that was in a program 
is actually in real life and then he just goes out there and just causes mayhem and they get Denzel out of jail to try to track him down and take him down because he was the only wow. one that was close enough. And it's fucking a fantastic underrated movie, as I said, called Virtuosity. Such a good fucking movie, dude. You have to does, see it. Why does that sound like Demolition Man? It kind of could be like that, yeah. <laughs> It kind of could be like that. If no one's ever seen Virtuosity, you should definitely check it out. It's, 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 I think it's the first time I've seen Russell Crowe in a movie, but it's definitely my favorite Russell Crowe movie. <laughs> he gets down and has fun as Sid 6.7. And then, wow, Zero, I have to watch that. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. It's, it's, it's a really good sci fi movie for his time. And I, 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 I go to it because you said someone who eats glass and Sid 6.7, when he gets injured, he will eat glass or he will like just take some glass to get the nanobites back working or whatever the fuck it is and he'll regenerate mm-hmm. that way. So he was kinda difficult No to, shit. Yeah, he was kinda difficult to kill. You had to kill him a specific way. If not he would just keep regenerating himself just by finding glass. That's fucking crazy and off topic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, a, a stranger addiction, yes, uh, eating glass and stuff like that. <laughs> exactly. My mind went somewhere else because bedazzled. Sam, uh, 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 Samuel Elliott, spinning glass at your ass. No, nobody remembers. It's just no. me, man. I'm just just you. You're the one with all the obscure memories. My memories are fucked. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Syaxi. Is it sexy or just sexy? I always don't. I just call her sexy. Okay, sexy says. Uh, I remember that that chick that ate mattresses, and the other one yes. diapers. What? There was one that would also eat the foam out of couch cushions. Like she would even take like a bag of it to work with her and shit. They're fucking crazy. Most of them are like eating things, which is weird. Like the there's the lady that eats cat hair. That one made me throw up. Um, but yeah, they're fucking crazy ass people. That's just weird. Like I can understand addiction, but that's just a weird addiction. You know, like how do you go to someone and say, Hey, Hey, how you doing? Um, you don't mind if I eat this, uh, this pillow? (laughs) Yeah. You don't mind, you don't mind if I eat your pillow while you caress me? (laughs) What? Yes, I do. Hell no. I paid good money for this. My bed was free and I still wouldn't let anybody eat it. That's weird, dude. Um, but, um, you know, I I come from a, a long family of addicts. And mm-hmm. I can say luckily I'm not one. I don't know how it missed me. But uh, my mom was reading this book recently about addiction and how... Mm-hmm. Um, there's a couple different theories that it's like a, a, a learning disability, kind of like, um, oh, what is that called? Where you see and, and read things backwards, dyslexia, uh-huh. you know, like something like that. I'm not saying that it is, but it's like a learning disability like that where people don't know when to stop. You know, people are addicted to that feeling of, of whatever it is they're doing. And it's not so much the thing, it's the feeling that it gives them. That's what they're addicted to. Yes, I totally understand that. Uh, my family is... It come from a line of addiction. My father was an addict before I was born. You know, he was into drugs and stuff like that. By the time I was born and and raised, he was clean he was great but in the years later when he he had to be focused on you know uh, being medically maintained and stuff like that he'll be addicted to the the medicine you know that he had to take and whatnot like that there there were signs you know but it's, it's just something that it was there and my mom bless her heart you know she dealt with all that and and she was always by his side always because she understood you know and and my mom once again bless her heart understood other people in my family addiction so it came to like my brother when he was addicted to stuff and my other brother that passed away and he was uh kind of like close to my father where he was addicted to a lot of stuff there's is some things that you can't control and you, you, there's 
hard to you know get it out of your system my mom was addicted to smoking and she read a book Uh and that book helped her now she stopped she's been clean for years and years i think it's maybe close to 10 years now i think she said wow yeah it was it was it was a while back and she doesn't like the smell of it and i think I thank God because I grew up with them smoking all the time and I hated the fucking smell of it. So yeah, she, she's great. Um, but I see other people, especially at work, dude, that's like people who are always drinking, people are always doing mm-hmm. fucking weed. And I understand weed is cool and all, but I feel like some people use it. They're, they're too addicted, you know? Yeah. It's like, it's like a crutch. It's like all you need to. And then you feel like this is what I need to maintain myself. And this is what I need to get through the day. And, I know it's it's too much. Um, but I understand that that like you know it's wrong, but you have that need, and you just don't know how to control it. You know, and people say like, just do this, and just do that, and it's a process. You know, that's why yeah. they they need friends and family. Um, people get counseling or get therapy. And even then, there's always there's always the 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 temptation that just like hovers around you, you know, to get it over with. Yeah, that's the biggest thing that that I know that addicts deal with is the addiction of of going back to it. Mm-hmm. They may get out and get clean and stop doing whatever they were they were they were doing that they were addicted to, but the you know, availability of whatever it was that they're addicted to is so readily available that the the temptation is always there. Like, I've always heard the thing with people that used to do heroin and stuff like that. You know, you ask them, do you want to do some heroin? And they could be 20 years sober and they'll say yes Mm -hmm. because you're giving them that opportunity and there's no, they'll won't do it. You know, hopefully they won't do it, but they'll, I want to, I'm just not going to. Because the temptation, so you that's what you have to fight is the temptation. That's why if Jigsaw from the Saw movies would make a trap for everybody's addiction. You're fucked. And, <laughs> and put them through it, then, then you'll quit right away. You're fucked. At least that, that those people that have, like, the hoarding addiction, if they would, like, get them out of the house, Get them to go to Disneyland for the day and then hire a bunch of crackheads to clean the house for $2, then all of that shit would be gone. Yeah, but then you come back and they'll come back and it's like, oh, uh, like, you know, it everything's gone. And freak it's out, just yeah. Like, there's a freak out. Just... They just let them freak out. <laughs> I, I don't understand why they treat them like babies. Let them freak out, they'll get over it, and then the fucking they'll buy new shit. <laughs> Give them nothing but lawn chairs and fucking paper plates and tell them to grow up. Uh, I understand that addiction as well of getting, like, hoarding and whatnot or being like so as you can see connected to your but you're stuff. a geek that's that's different you geek out about things hoarders are like you couldn't even walk into that room because there's no path to walk in because there's so much stuff crammed in there because they're afraid to throw things away because they think that they might need it later because it fulfills something that they're missing like their husband left or their parents divorced or some bullshit I went into someone's home while helping doing a campaign. Um, and they wanted to shoot at his family home where his parents are and where he grew up. We went over there and it's a beautiful, I guess it was good. It was a beautiful neighborhood. The house is nice outside and you go inside and it's just crowded. First of all, his parents are super old, like, they look like they're about to like just like kick the bucket soon. And I walk in and it's just stuff everywhere and magazines and papers stacked up on the staircases going up and the kitchen look like you gotta maneuver in there. And I'm just feeling suffocating. I'm like, what the fuck? Like I understand like they're very old and they must have lived there forever and they just collecting stuff, but this is Awful, and if I was a son, I would just be like, "Yo, I gotta help these people out," cause it's just bad. I had to do that to my own mom when we had to move, and she just was so like, we had too much stuff, and I was like, "We need to condense, cause we're moving right. to a smaller location, and you need to let 
go of a lot of stuff. And she was attached to a lot of stuff, especially because of my father. She was attached to a lot of stuff. And we had to let go. My mom had that too, um, especially, you know, after my dad died and all that stuff too. And, and we had this huge, like, two-story house and all the stuff from that. And then we started downsizing more and more. And then, you know, we all moved down to South Texas. And then it was like, well, at that point, you have to take only the shit that you really want at that point. And so she put most of her stuff into storage. And it was like a two-car garage storage building. It was ridiculous. Damn. And then um, she was in a really bad car wreck and broke her back. And all she owned, all she had at that moment was what was ever in her car at that time. Because she lived with me until her back got better. So whatever she had in the car, you know, during the wreck, that's all she had with her. And we were planning on a trip to Santa Fe. So she had, like, clothes and her computer and all that kind of stuff. So she wasn't, like, without. But it really put her at this, like, minimalist kind of mindset where, like, that's all she had. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one of the things that we would watch when she used to live with me in Austin was that show Hoarders. And she would, we'd be watching that show and she'd start like cleaning out her purse. She'd start like cleaning out like her luggage, like any stuff that she still had with her because she didn't want to become like that, you know? And then we ended up later um, going to that storage building and cutting down probably three-fourths of it because my mom was like, I'm not going to end up like one of those people. We're gonna just going to start throwing everything away. <laughs> it's true. It's too much. Uh, Danny says, my uncle went to visit a friend. I've been to house that the kitchen was super small and the guy had pots and pans everywhere. I'm like, damn, did you use to own five restaurants? <laughs> Maybe exactly. He did. Maybe he did, Danny. Maybe he likes to cook for a lot of people. Why are you judging? It's a soup kitchen. It's a soup kitchen. <laughs> oh man, it's. Uh, I was looking at an article about addiction, and um, they break down. What is it? Eleven ways to kill the cycle yeah. of an addiction. And the first thing is self determination. If um. Yep. Uh, self-determination just means acknowledging that you deserve a better life and that it is in your power to bring that about admit this and believe it and you are ready to recover that's the first step and then goes to the planning mm -hmm. which you gotta find any kind of method to do it there's courage which I think is the same shit as planning and shit um, one thing that it says here that I, I highly agree with is um, being social. I think addiction is very like out of your control. Personal. If, yeah, it's personal and very out of your control if you're just alone. Yeah, exactly. You know? I agree with that. And, you know, we're, we're all friends and family here. As I can say, you know, my mom is an addict too. And that's one of the things that we had to show her. She had to hit rock bottom and be completely alone to go, okay, this addiction is, is ostracizing me from my friends and my family. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we had to be there and say, we're, st we're here for you. We're still here from you or for, for you, not from you. Mm -hmm. And really let her know that, you know, this isn't forever and she can fight it. And, you know, we're going to get through this. And we did. And she's almost a year sober. And, uh, you know, it's, it's like this huge weight being lifted off everybody's shoulder, but there's still so much animosity towards my mom from my sisters that it's really sad that it, you know, something like that really split us up as a family. It's, 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 yeah, it's hard and, and, and the way it affects other family members, but you got to be understanding. That's why I say my mom is very understanding because she, you know, lived with my father and, and dealt with that and, and she knows how an addiction works and how out of control it is and how you got to be understanding and, 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 and just know that people are, they have flaws and they will fuck up and you just got to be there to pick them up again. And my brother who passed away, he had a real bad addiction 
and his addiction was like the cause of his death. And when my father passed away, it affected all of us and affected him the most. So we went to Puerto Rico where we buried my father. We were all there. And when it came, he was good. But when it came to the time of my father's uh, funeral, he was nowhere to be found. And he just disappeared. And he totally, he totally skipped out on the funeral and the burial. And then he showed up out of nowhere one day. And he was, you know, on, on something. And, of course, my oldest brother was pissed off. Pissed off at him. He was like, how can you do this? Blah, 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 blah. But my mother was understanding and and try to like make him understand but he was mad and he was mad for a good reason and I understand too but I understand his issue and what it was and 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 how flawed he is but he didn't mean it that was his way of coping cuz here's a father that he loved that we all loved and now he's gone and I guess he couldn't deal with it he couldn't deal with the fact of seeing um my father in the casket or seeing him being buried like damn it I saw my father I was probably the last family member that saw my father before he finally passed away all right so imagine me when I went to see my father and I told him like they told me like you got you know this is this is it so you need to talk to him and say your final words and I go in there and I tell him my final words and I see the I see him there like like his, he's just breathing very heavily, his eyes closed, and this is like the last moments. And, and, and I tell him my, my, my goodbyes and my story and shit like that. And I just see a tear going down his eye. Like, how do you think that affected me? Like, I literally got out of there and cried in the bathroom before I heard my mom screaming, saying, like, he's gone, you know? So my brother didn't get to spend, like, he loved him to death. And then he probably also feel like, you know, that was, that, that, that could be me as well, you know, one day or whatever. So he probably couldn't handle it. And that's why he found that outcome because he, that's what gets him through anything. My mom understands that. My older brother just couldn't, like, see how could you do that now, you know? Right. It's, it's out of your hands. It's, 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 the people could change. People can get better. But they got to understand that an addiction is something very difficult to get out of your system it's something that you clearly been with for a long while and just to like stop it's a process it can happen and it could be done but in the in in in, in the back of your mind and, and your body is just like tempted to like you know go back to it you know what i'm saying um my dad drank and he like i've said before he drank himself to death and it was crazy to see that, you know, he did it as a coping mechanism for something that happened to him when he was little. And that he, you know, did that almost, you know, in his 40s. And, it, you know, for something to have this huge thing that they do that they think that they can't live without what, you know, that that's what I don't understand. And, like, you know, because I'm always, you know, like I said, I'm a minimalist. So I can just detach from something and I'm done with that. But... Mm-hmm people like that they can't they think that they have to have it to live and that's why it's so sad and you know he was in this bad fire and he had I guess passed out drunk and caused a fire or something I don't know something like that and uh, the doctor in the ER he pulled us aside and he said he's not going to get any better you can't force him to go to AA or rehab or anything the only person that's going to help him is him when he's ready yep. and that's to be said with any addict you can't the reason why they don't take to change or you know rehab and all those kind of things is mostly because people are trying to force them or give them some ultimatum but you know nine out of ten addicts if not more are not going to change until they're ready mm-hmm. it's it's hard and difficult and my father was because my father went through that and knows how it is how it is to be an addict and 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 getting past that and bettering yourself he was a social worker so he yeah many other people you know try to get through their things and, and and very understanding and very compassionate um but even him himself not saying that it was really like 
extreme, but he had those moments when you say that you see that, he, you know, he still had it with him. He still had like like a little yeah. addiction and whatnot. And every, like I said, everybody has their own thing. Like your father said with the drinking, and I've seen some some people, like especially close friends. I'm like, you know, you should calm down on on drinking and stuff like that to just get by because it could be it could get worse. And the one, thing, <laughs> one thing I hated uh-huh. seeing like someone stupid drunk and acting stupid, and it's just like, oh my god, you're much better when you're sober. <laughs> There's two things like that that I learned from my family, and not just my immediate family, like my you know aunts and uncles, cousins, all that kind of shit. Is you know because so many of them are addicts, it it was like. I did the opposite of them. You know, it's kind of like people say, you know, you lived in Texas for so long, but you don't have a Texas accent. It's like, that's my choice. I don't want to sound like those assholes. <laughs> but gosh, I didn't want to be an addict either. Shout out to Texas, though. <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> and uh, the other thing was uh, watching so many of them go through so many divorces. I think that's why I'm almost 40 and I'm still single. Yeah, it's like a thing now. Like, everybody goes through it. Yeah. It's like an epidemic now. Uh, I just want to, I just want to, not laughing at this situation or anything like that. <laughs> right. Go back to, remember what I said, like, you know, Randy be creeping and stalking? Yeah, he's watching right now. <laughs> that motherfucker. <laughs> so, shout out to Randy. Shout out. Uh, Shout out to Randy. Thank you for coming into the machine room finally. Um, sorry for making you cry. <laughs> making Randy cry. Oh, man. Tell me a you story. took Deacon's Easter basket. Yeah. Yeah. Tell you me a story of, of my father. It's always difficult for myself, but I always tell the story because it's something I feel people should hear because we all go through it. We all lost someone, and... It's just, you see that, I mean, me and my mom, it took like a long time for us to get over it and shit like that, especially my mother, but we did it. We moved on and, and, you know, other things come and, and things are great. Um, but going back to the, to the topic of addiction and talking about moving on is like the moving on from addiction. So there's things I said, don't be alone, be social, find some kind of activity or something to do every time you get an urge you know, uh, it's, 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 it, it's simple, but it's not, you know, yeah. because it all depends on you and your willpower. That's why I'm wearing this Green Lantern shirt. There you go. It's all about will. Yes. You and your willpower and how determined you are. But the number one key to it more, uh, you know, besides that doing it for yourself is doing it for the people that love you because addiction will hurt the ones around you. Thou shall for life. So if anybody's out there facing some kind of addiction, man, all I got to tell you is that, you know, you got to fight the good fight. You got to find something you like to do and just try to get through it. You got to go tur- cold turkey, and that's the worst. Going cold turkey. Like you said, you know, get these hoarders, take them somewhere, just get this <laughs> shit out, and then throw them back in. It's like, here it is, motherfucker, it's all gone. It's like, ah! ah they just well, pe- people the always say that smoking is the worst one. That's the worst one to go to- cold turkey. And I always say, I did it. And if I can do it, you can do it. Yeah. I went from, I, um, I don't know if, I don't know if I've ever told you the story, but I definitely haven't told it on the podcast. But mm-hmm. um, I was working at Target in Austin, and I went into work, you know, normal kind of four in the morning shift. And that was my last cigarette. Because uh, that day at work, they were rewaxing the floors, and I didn't know that I had an adverse effect to the floor wax fumes. And I had a bronchial spasm and stopped breathing and had to go to Damn. the hospital, and they said I almost died. And uh, so one of the things the doctor said, you know, he asked me, you know, do you smoke? I said, yeah, I smoke cigarettes. He goes, well, that shit's over with. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, you have to quit, like, today. Like, today's your last day. I was like, okay. So um, 
I couldn't get a hold of my mom. I finally got a hold of my mom after they discharged me. And uh, I handed my pack to her because she still smoked back then. And I said, those are yours now. I'm, I'm done. And I can't, I can't go through that again. I never got like why it's so good. It was some, It was more like it was something to do, and and that sounds like a shitty excuse, but it's not. It's you. You miss the action of it. You miss like it's like a ritualistic kind of thing. Like, mm-hmm. and not only that, you usually get free breaks out of it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like people that smoke usually get more breaks opposed to people that don't smoke. Because you can it. get away from you can get away with it saying, "Oh, I gotta have a cigarette." They're like, "All right, go, just go." Mm-hmm. Well, then in but that that's... case, I gotta go start smoking now. I want them breaks, baby. <laughs> yeah, like sexy says, it's like fapping a lot. Oh. You, you miss the action. <laughs> like that bean. But no, I it, I do sometimes. I I miss like holding it and and that whole thing. I miss going outside and talking with other people that smoke because you're usually going to get some good conversation out of it. It was it's not like going to the dog park and just hear people that never shut up about their dog. I mean, you, you met like philosophers and people that read about you know like <laughs> the economy and shit. Like you're like outside smoking a pack. Like oh my god, like that's interesting. Tell me more. Uh, is it messed up that I learned how to hold a cigarette and toss it because of the mask? <laughs> That's actually very awesome. <laughs> Remember that part? He's like, hi. And he <laughs> just flings it and shit. <laughs> I was like, That's cool. That's it. That's how it's, that's what we did outside every day. About four or five times a day. Actually when you do that, when you flick it in someone's face. Uh, we used to go, have you ever seen Star Wars in real life? And go, no, and you flick a cigarette in their face <laughs> and it looks like fuck? a fucking laser beam. That's fucked up. Especially at night, it looks really cool, but you don't want to get burned. And they're like, ah, ah. You know, LP blames me for his for when he started getting into cigarettes. But it wasn't my idea for his character to be smoking an officium. That was his idea. So, oh, see, that's not your fault then. Yeah, it was like, oh, good smoke. And I'm like, oh, okay, if you want. And then it was take after take. It was like, hold on. <laughs> and then you know, he was like into it. And I was like, don't blame me, dog. Because I didn't tell you to fucking... Your character is a smoker. <laughs> there's a funny story about... Um, there's that movie Party Monster with Macaulay Culkin and Seth Green. Mm-hmm. Well, Marilyn Manson is in it. He has a small character. And uh, he wanted his character in the movie to smoke. Well, Macaulay Culkin smokes in real life. Marilyn Manson had never smoked a cigarette. Really? He had shot heroin. He had done, you know, coke. He, you know, he's sniffing schneef off a of cow tit. You know, he's <laughs> he'd done every drug but had never smoked a cigarette. So they're filming the movie Party Monster back in like, you know, 2002, 2003, something like that. Mm-hmm. And he's Macaulay Culkin was talking about walking down the street down, you know, in New York City with Marilyn Manson to go buy him a pack of cigarettes. <laughs> and he was like, you know, of all people... Macaulay Culkin uh, kind of tainted Marilyn Manson by giving him cigarettes. Fucking Kevin. Fucking Kevin. Shout out to Macaulay Culkin, though, out there doing things. He's got a podcast, too. That's right. Bunny Ears or something like that. Bunny Ears, yep. Mm-hmm. Big wrestling fan as well. And mm-hmm. he's been showing up in YouTube videos. Yep. He's doing it. He sure has. Kids big. But when is, not life. when is he going to be in the Machine Room podcast? He should be in here right now, but he's not. <laughs> That's when you know we made it. We get Macaulay Culkin. Ask him all the hard-hitting questions. What sets you claim? <laughs> you can hit him with those questions like you did Rex. Oh, Imagine. for sure. That's, that's, that's going to be an ongoing thing with any guests that we have. I'm not going to ask regular ass questions are going to be some crazy ass lunatic kind of shit where, where do you get these questions from mind your business just answer don't look them. at me don't look at me <laughs> <laughs> oh man wait how many what, 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 what when we look at and we have some good you know what i love you people for showing up here in the ocho the ocho eight. 
the Ocho episode eight is fantastic. You guys are the shit. We love the interaction going on here. Shout out to Randy for watching us as well. Uh, my brother. From yeah, thank you. And um, I was me and my mom watch some old my way videos, and um, I think it was like one of the um, the old like. Either one of the old Ask My Ways or like one of the original game editions. Something where Randy was on it and my mom goes, he's so cute and funny. <laughs> <laughs> Randy, mother approved. Mother approved. <laughs> Speaking of game edition, I got to go back and freaking make some. <laughs> like I have all these <laughs> Twitch clips. I haven't put them together and put them on game edition. That shit's been empty for a while. It's just been focused on yeah, Twitch. Yeah, Game. We gotta make more. That's my new addiction. Yeah. Twitch. I just want to do it more. Yeah, me too. I've been on there like crazy lately. Who knew, right? Who knew years ago that this would be a thing? I was saying that, you know, that whole thing where people say, you know, do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. It's like all I just want to do is like fucking eat Taco Bell and play video games like how can that be a job and Twitch is the answer there you go so all you gotta do you gotta do that those two all the time and then eventually you're gonna get endorsement from Taco Bell yes <laughs> and my yeah. dog will be the new the new spokes dog yes I want some Taco Bell right now fantastic this is bad yeah Danny's like me he just wants to Twitch all day long because it's so fun like it, it's so different than, you know, playing a game by yourself. And then when you have an audience, you're like, oh, check out this move. <laughs> check out what I unlocked today. Or check out this thing. It makes it so much more fun. Or like yesterday or the day before when you fuck up and, and someone there to watch it and laugh with you. It makes it so much more fun and interactive. It's like back in the day when you're just playing a video game and your friends are watching you play it or something like that, you know. But instead, this is more of a bigger audience and you get to make new friends and it's just fun. I was watching a stream yesterday this guy was on the front page of Twitch and so I just clicked on it because he was playing GTA 5 he had over 10,000 viewers Shit. and it's like how because he was doing funny voices and playing GTA 5 I'm like wow like how do I get on that level but has he played GTA 5 talking like Christopher Walken? I doubt it. Exactly. That's what I got to do. Whoa! These fools want to step up. <laughs> Pow! Exactly. <laughs> you know, I always get throwing my awful walking somehow. Somehow. But this guy at work was trying to do it like The Godfather, and I was like, Is it awful? You can't. he's like, yeah, that's right. You do do De Niro, don't you? And I'm like, yeah, I could do De Niro, too. Like, you talking to me? <laughs> there you go. You talking to me? I put a post on Facebook one time that women look like Robert De Niro when they're taking their makeup off. Cause... <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. Well, speaking of De Niro, you ready for that Joker? I don't know. I know you have this whole thing about like, damn it, and it should have been mine, but Come on, I know you're a little interested to see how this is going to I'm happen. interested to see it, and I'm going to go see it. I'm, I'm not going to be like one of those people that's going to go see it the first night. I want to see it because I'm intrigued and I love the Joker. Yes, I'm bummed out that they didn't. I didn't get a call from DC to greenlight my <laughs> script because you, of all people, know and have seen it mm -hmm. that I have been working on it, uh, at least the storyline I have outlined. Um. But yeah, I'm interested to see what direction they're going to go. And I've, what I've heard from it has, has been fucking insane. Like people said that the ending will leave you speechless for like hours. You know, kind of like a like the first time you saw Saw kind of thing. And so I'm really kind of interested to see what they're going to do. You know, the whole time I'm going to be going, you know, that's not what I would have done. But <laughs> <laughs> Most definitely. Most definitely. Because I, I literally have I have notebooks of scenes and dialogue and story outlines and you know it was something so you know um, I I still want to work on it it's not going to be a script anymore I think I'm going to try to turn it into like a graphic novel mm -hmm. 
and then hopefully I can get that picked up because that would be awesome because then that could be like actual backstory lore and then but I'll we'll buy see. a copy there you go of this what is going to be like six part miniseries something like that I was thinking like maybe ten there break it go. up into ten parts Some or twelve shit. like they did Watchmen and they're going to like take up a whole year you know what's taking up a long time that fucking doomsday clock oh my god took them forever i haven't even read one of them because i was like i'm just gonna get Mm -hmm. them all and then read them and it's been like what almost two years i think it's still going yeah they fucking come out with an issue like every six months (laughs) and have 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 you read it because i haven't Uh -uh. i haven't touched it so i don't know like is it its own thing or is it like also with no, it's, whatever's going on in the fucking their it's own supposed stories? to be attached to that universe and to that storyline from what I heard and so that's why I was really interested in it and uh, wanted all of them to come out at once or have them do like a graphic novel and then buy that but shit it's gonna be like fucking 2035 before they're finished with that shit yeah for real cause I'm I like if I read them together are they together or are they like so out of like it's span of time, and then I'm gonna be lost because I'm not reading Batman now and Superman now and not any yeah. of the comics. I don't want to be that lost. No, absolutely. Which the Batman comics are like so interesting right now, and I'm like, oh, I can't keep up with all this. <laughs> they have the best stories out of probably any comic book, besides you know like rarities like V for Vendetta or Watchmen or. The mask, or you know, the crow, things like that, yeah. little rare, obscure things. Batman usually has the best storyline. They, they do, they do. Right now, I'm currently reading the big Marvel thing that's the, the House of X and Power of X. So that's that's kind of good. Uh, the new issue, something happened, I don't know, so I, I need to read it. Um, my favorite comics right now still are the Power Ranger ones. Uh, I am reading The Boys before I watch the boys that's a good idea which i heard and the boys is freaking fantastic but i want to read the comics so i can watch the show and then be like oh oh oh, oh, okay i see what they did like i did with the umbrella academy because yeah i'm I'm a my chemical romance fan and i always wanted to read the comic he did and when the show came out i finally read them then i watched the show and i was like ah i like this better too (laughs) Cause there you go. In my opinion, the show does it better than the comic, but that's my mm-hmm. opinion. But I see what the you know I said what they grabbed in there, what they change, and possibly what's gonna come up. I don't know if I read more. <laughs> so nice. Yeah, but it's almost that time, ladies and gentlemen. Almost. Almost. That, almost that time for you all to leave the machine room, but we're not gonna leave you empty-handed. Yes, we are. I've, I've been working on my book, so instead of That's reading, right. I've been rewrite, you know, writing and mainly doing going back and doing proofreading and uh, making sure everything is in past tense and you know grammar, spelling issues, all that kind of fun stuff. So it's fun to see it all come together, and you know, I have a cover ready and. Um, so that way when I pitch it to, I'm going to go pitch it to a management company first. So that way I can have management to get published. Can I do the audio book? Absolutely. <laughs> In my best Morgan Freeman. And then I walked into the room <laughs> and Sarah looked at me and I was like, Hey, so, the end. <laughs> I think that. The funnest thing was, um, you know, normally when you're when you're writing, you're just like writing on, you know, whatever, you know, page and and font and whatever, you know, Microsoft Word or or whatever it gives you. Mm-hmm. But once you actually format it, the size of a book, the the margins of a book, the font of a book, it it all comes together, and now it, it looks like a book, and that's like the coolest thing to see. That's the cover. The, this is exactly what the pages are going to look like. You know, I've got headers and footers and page numbers. And so it's really great to see that's it. That's what people are going to see. Now I just need to make sure everything else is tip top. 
do you know how many pages your book will be? Or you don't um, know because you haven't like, formatted it? To... Do, no, it's formatted. Um, right now, it's probably going to be close to 400. Let me see. I was thinking that number. I'm already scared by the book. <laughs> um, let's see. I can get a page number real quick. Um, did I show you the cover? Yeah, I did. Did you? I don't remember. I, I think I sent it to you. If not, then I'll send it again. Yeah, let me see it. And can we? Can you have an alternate variant cover where it's kind of like a Fabio kind of thing and it'd be me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just carrying an alien. Yes. Um, we got to meet him, actually. he um, They did this whole photo shoot with him in oh. Best Buy with Fabio. It was really cool. Oh, shit. What has he been up to? He's doing the same shit, being Fabio. <laughs> I haven't heard or seen Fabio in forever. Not since that duck thing. What the? When he got, when he was riding a, a roller coaster and a duck hit him in the face and broke his nose. I remember. Bloody the fuck out of it. I remember. You Holy remember? Shit, I remember the footage too. Um, that's right hilarious. now I'm at two sixty three, two hundred sixty three pages, and I'll probably double that Sweet. once it's all done and put together. But you're done with the story completely. I'm not done now. I'm okay. still working on it. But, okay. um, you know, while I'm still um, proofing the next parts, um, I want to proofread everything else. So I'm, like, multitasking. Mm. A professionalist right here, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely. Hammer. And I do... And I'm doing my own covers. Look at that. She's going to... You all better get this book when it comes out. You have to. Or you're not allowed in the machine room anymore. I said it. <laughs> I said it. And lose your machine room pass. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to take it back. Everybody better have a copy. Kaiju said he will. Thank you. There you go. Okay. And Danny. Thank you there both. You Whether digital or freaking physical. It doesn't matter. Support. Yeah, that's why I want to go through an agency so that way I can get it published everywhere because I think it would be cool to like walk past it at Walmart or something and be like, I made that. Mm -hmm. And then <laughs> when you walk past it at Walmart, there's going to be this little sensor that kicks off and it's like, hey, you want to read a good book? <laughs> go ahead and pick this one down here. And I do the audio. <laughs> there you go. Why isn't that a thing? It's, it will be. It will be with mine. <laughs> remember, did you ever watch The Critic? Hell yeah, I love The Critic. Did, you remember when they were doing like that whole um, uh, thing, like um, the Stephen King book, where he's like trapped in bed and the the super fan. Uh huh. Uh, oh, what the fuck is that called? Somebody uh, help me. Um, misery. There you go. Misery, and it, he's doing the whole thing with that, and he has his psycho fam and keep kept him like tied up to the bed to make him like do movie critics or critiques. And uh, there's he had the little cardboard cutout, and it just kept saying, "Buy my book, buy my book, <laughs> buy my book." And then she kills it, and he goes, "What's wrong?" And it just kept saying, "Buy my book," and then she puts the gun on him. <laughs> I'm gonna come out with one of those. The Critic was an awesome show. That show was gold. That was my shit. My favorite, my favorite moment in that whole series was he was like, now today we're going to look at Dennis the Menace to society. <laughs> <laughs> yes. He was like, hey, Mr. Wilson, what do you want? And then he did a drive-by on his little bike. Nice. Shot up the whole place <laughs> that he ran off. And Mr. Wilson That's gets up. He's like, Goddamn kids. <laughs> <laughs> a friend of mine just went to uh, to Hawaii and came back, and I was quoting an uh, episode from the, uh, the critic when he became a trucker, and he had to take this long road, like this long trip to Florida and back. 
and they told him to get a snow globe. And so he comes, gets out of the truck. They're like, but did he make the trick? And he, they would make the trip and he holds up the, the snow globe. And his boss at the trucking company is the Scottish guy. And he goes, well, maybe the laddie made the trip and maybe he didn't. But he brought us a snow globe and that's good <laughs> enough for me. <laughs> so my friend that went to Hawaii told him that. I was like, you got to get a snow globe now. It's such a good show. But anyways, thank you guys for coming for episode eight, the Ocho. The Ocho. You making you've been making me want to watch Dodgeball this whole time, ever since you said the Ocho. I watched it the other day. That's what brought it up. <laughs> and it was funny when watching it again. And it was, who, 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 what's his name? Bateman. What? Something Bateman, right? No. Am I wrong? Fuck. No idea. The dude from Arrested Development is that guy who was all like. Oh yeah, the crazy guy. Yeah, the, the guy. <laughs> he was, the other guy was like commentating right, and then he'd just say the fucking like most obvious or repeated shit, and he was all cool about it. That's funny. <laughs> I love when they uh, they do the whole forfeit thing. It's a great stat strategy, Cotton. I hope it works out for him. <laughs> <laughs> my my. Favorite. Oh, Jason Bateman. Yeah, that's the. There you go, Jason Bateman. My favorite was when they did like the montage of them taking out people and they fought that one crew that was like the hood ones and they got hit yes. by dodgeball. It's like them getting shot and shit. Yeah, like boom. <laughs> uh, shout out to those crazy bunch that gave us great funny movies. Like, Go dodgeball. Dodgeball. And uh, rest in peace, oh Patrick O'Hulahan. Right? That was the name? Yes. Patrick Ahoyan. Um, Rip Torn. He died. <laughs> yep. So really rest in peace to Patrick O'Hulahan. My boy. And with that, we give you a send off. I'd like to thank everyone who showed up tonight. Kaiju, Danny, you guys are always fantastic. To uh, 69247, thank you for the compliment. I'm sure Hammer of Venus will always appreciate that. Um, for sure I'm kind of offended he didn't say anything about my beer but that's okay you know ladies <laughs> first uh, it happened <laughs> uh, shout out to Sexy for showing up um, Heather Heather yes Heather thank mm-hmm. you for showing up and thank you for doing this show I hope you come again um, I'm sure there's going to be a time when I can't do this or come and be a part of this show and we'll be a triplet and we could talk about buttholes all there the time there you go and thank you for Danny as always yes so this is the machine room uh unfortunately you guys are either gonna have to go into your rooms or get the hell out <laughs> i'm nastradamus and i'm hammer venus and please follow hammer venus on twitch and now and tw- twitter twitter that's right see her tweets twitter and follow me on twitter nastradamus Instagram Nash Thomas and also follow me on Twitch which is twitch.tv slash my way entertainment all one word booyah booyah find out everything you need to know about machine room podcast at machine room podcast.com and please if this is your first time watching or if you're listening somewhere please follow us on Twitch Twitch.tv slash Machine Room Podcast. We're every Wednesday night now. This is the Ocho, and we are <laughs> going to do a Nueve next week. And also, watch out for MWForLife.com because right. new things are coming. That's Lots right. of new things, and I'm not going to say what they are, but new things are coming. That's right. And you're going you're gonna to shit on yourself. Yes, and if you don't even know, there's a lot of new things there already probably to you right now. So already. Go ahead, get there, and watch all our videos from our catalog for how much is that, Hammer Venus? Dollar ninety nine. One ninety nine. Yo, that's the best a streaming month. that's the best streaming service. Ever. Ever. Ever, ever. Of Fuck Disney. Time. We got it. We, we bring it in the cheap shed. That's right. So please join us and you won't regret it when something new comes along. And it'll hit you in the face. Hard. <laughs> Hard. <laughs> 
Thank you, everybody, and good night. Hi, Jesus, the Raffle.